Hello everyone, my name is Kristen, and uh, this is one in a series of lectures about Kundalini. And I'd, I'd like to welcome you all here and, and uh, let you know that it is, it is my honor to be able to give to you uh, uh, some of the information that has been given to me through the process of the Awakened Kundalini. I am not your typical uh, Indian or Asian guru. I'm from California, Santa Rosa, California. I grew up in California. And uh, when the Kundalini came to me uh, strongly at the age of 30, and I'm, I'm 50 now, so <laughs> uh, it, uh, it was a very strong and a very powerful journey. And at the time, pre-internet, uh, there was no information to be had or to be uh, given about this process and, and how to walk a path uh, within such incredibly dynamic changes and transformations. And uh, so I, I suffered quite a bit. But I also learned quite a bit through that suffering. And as I was later able to uh, discern, the sufferings and the educations I was given were basically preludes to a mandate to teach for other people who may be going through this journey a safe and a sane way of approaching the intensity of the Kundalini. Okay. Uh, in a little bit, I will, I will get into the dynamics of the Kundalini that I'm talking about. But one of the most important features of my teachings was, uh, separates me from some of the other people that may be teaching similar concepts is that I don't come at it from a, I come at it from a, a very Western, civilized, technological world. <laughs> um, you know, I drive a car, I have a phone, I have a cell phone. Uh, and most of my teaching is done on the computer. Uh, this in one way has greatly expanded the reach of the Shakti Kundalini within me. Uh, and on the other hand, it has in some way diminished some of the in-person uh, uh, meetings that I would have with people if, if I were to write books and do television and, and expand into those areas, which is precisely what is starting to occur. Uh, I come from a very a simple uh, explanation based platform. And I'm not trying to confuse anyone or to inject a lot of ego into this process. Matter of fact, I'm trying to bring clarity and a sense of selflessness into this process. One of the major platforms of the teachings that are given is the idea of service, selfless service, without expectation of being repaid for that service. This is one of the strongest frequencies of interaction that I have found works with this level of Kundalini. This is a very high level of Kundalini. This is not martial arts. Okay. This is not a religion, although it is very devotional extremely devotional. The church that this devotion takes place within is your body. The most sacred church that you have. The pews are your spine, your spinal column, your spinal cord, the chakras, energy centers that line the spine and, and connect with nerve plexi centers of nerve plexuses upon, upon the spine that control, control endocrine function, many other functions. Okay, this is the church that we're going to explore tonight. And uh, so here we go. In as clear and simple terms as I can make it. Kundalini is an evolutionary force within every human being. Everybody has it. Everybody has it lying dormant in the last three vertebrae of the tailbone. Okay? In some of the ancient 
manuscripts. It's seen as a, a serpent that is wrapped three and a half times around an egg. That's fine. I'm good for that. That's basically a representation uh, you know, of the potential within an egg and the uh, potential within a, a, a spermatozoa. Okay. So, basically, it's within your tailbone, dormant for most people. For 90, 95, 98 percent of the population, it's a dormant quality, only to be awakened at a, within a certain lifetime, within a certain level of conditioning and refinement that the person has found within themselves through progressive lives of refinement, of spiritual evolution. A person begins to come into the knowledge of Kundalini when they have reached them. Typically not before. They won't even hear of the word Kundalini. A lot of the first timers that come uh, to me with Kundalini Awakening have no idea what has occurred. Absolutely no idea. Uh, one uh, beautiful friend of mine who came uh, to me with this condition said, yeah, I wound up in the hospital bed and I dreamed that I had this word stenciled on my forehead. And I remember it and I told my girlfriend, go look that up on the web, web really quick. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. And she did. And she corrected the misspelling. And it spelled Kundalini. And he, you know, he he had a very serious disease and uh, was not expected to make it. And guess what? He's still with us today, and that was over two years ago. It's a very powerful force. It will transform you from the inside out, literally. Transform you from the inside out, from, from the cellular genetic level, all the way up to your gross physical being and your mental being and your psychological being and your emotional being and your spiritual being. Sometimes all at the same time. So you can imagine, you know, what level of a catas catastrophic transformation we're talking about. But she's not always that strict or severe with a person. And I say she because we're dealing with uh, sacred gender. Sacred spiritual gender. The sacred male, the sacred female. <coughs> Just as a seed is planted in the soil and is covered from the sunlight, a few inches under that soil, and watered, so too is the kundalini covered by the soil of the flesh, the soil of the bone. And its water is the refinement that you achieve through, throughout your lifetime. Okay? And when that, when that root system, just like a a, a, a little watermelon plant. When that root system is infiltrated into the soil, into the flesh, into the bone, and the stem starts to come up along the spine. This is all sacred feminine territory. This is Mother Nature, Mother Earth. Sacred feminine giving birth to her half of the equation. When that sacred stem reaches up through the earth and comes into the sunlight, the solar radiation, that's when the sacred father comes in and enervates. And that is where that sacred marriage takes place. Right here on the crown chakra for a human being. Right there. And it's a huge event in a person's life. It is life-changing. In that moment, in that moment, a person is given divine consciousness. Even for the briefest moment, that divine consciousness pervades the body, pervades the mind. All of the five expressions, that, expressions of humanity that I mentioned previously is pervaded with divine consciousness, unity consciousness. You know. You know God. You know Goddess. You know who you are and who everybody else is. You know every individuated piece of gravel on the, f on the ground, every leaf, every twig, every 
air molecule, and energetic structures that science has not even recognized yet. You know immediately what is occurring. For that flash of intuition, that flash of knowledge, you get to have that. And then it expands outward. And you begin to feel the incredible love of the divine within you, expanding outward in waves and waves and waves of love. And this doesn't stop. This keeps going day after day after day after day until you feel like you're going to explode with this love. And in many cases you do. You do explode. Cellular structures explode outward into massive gushes of radiance upon everything and everyone around you. And you're walking around in this incredible infusion of energy and light and love and unity and divine consciousness. And nobody around you knows what the heck's wrong with you. That person, he's just too damn happy. Something's not right. This has happened to people. <laughs> He's like, God, did you see how happy he is? <laughs> Get that man some Xanax. Quick. Seriously. The, the, the people around you will look at you and kind of just go, you're nuts. You know, they're thinking, you're nuts. Oh, and by the way, maybe I forgot to mention, you will hear what they're thinking. You will know what they're thinking. And you will see pictures of what they're thinking. Okay? Telepathy is just one of the first basic cities or gifts, exalted gifts, that comes with the Kundalini. Okay? And a lot of people will strive to have Kundalini so they can have that gift. Oh my gosh, I want to be telepathic. Oh, Chrism, wave your hand over me and awaken my Kundalini so that I can be telepathic. And of course, I will never do that. <laughs> we do not. We do not awaken the sacred divine within us uh, to just use the, some of the simple tools of service for others that are available to us there. Telepathy, psychokinesis, uh, all of these exalted skills are there for you to use in service of other people. Not yourself. Divine Father and Mother are servicing you. I mean, come on, how much do you want? Okay? They give you gifts to help other people. And in that helping, in that service that you give, are you incredibly enriched and serviced and helped and allowed into the first platform of enlightenment. This is what Kundalini brings. Enlightenment. In light, in meant. It was meant to be for every single person. This is the Kundalini, the quality of the divine energetic that is within me and that is what I'm giving to you okay, tonight. So let's get into some of the basic structures. You have chakras all over your body. You have thousands and thousands and thousands of, sh of chakras. I, a long time ago, when I was about 18, I looked at this book on uh, flower essences, and I uh, they had a they had a, an old Tibetan uh, engraving of all the nadis and chakras in the body. I'm sure some of you have seen this very same picture. So it's it's kind of famous, and there's just thousands of these energetic centers that disperse uh, uh, psychic and nervous energy throughout the body. Along the spine, there are, uh, according to some traditions, there are only five. According to some traditions, there are nine or ten. According to the tradition uh, that I'm uh, most comfortable explaining to people, there are seven. Okay? And these seven chakras basically control specific nervous functions and chemical secretions, endocrine functions, mental functions, and many other functions that uh, 
that they represent along the human spine. Okay? These chakras are not just for the functioning of the, of the physical body. They're also for the functioning of all five other bodies of expression. Do you remember what those are? Physical, emotional, mental, mental, psychological, and spiritual. Okay. These chakras incorporate those qualities. When the Kundalini begins to be awakened, the first chakra, which is uh, at the base of the spine, remember back in the tailbone, you may feel that tailbone begin to, to move on its own. You'll think you're going nuts at first because our tails aren't supposed to move. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My tail doesn't move, but now it's moving. And you may also feel a pressure at the base of the spine. Now, I'm, I'm going through this very quickly by, for virtue of what we're doing here. Um, if you uh, decide to, to come to uh, a gathering that we're having tomorrow, uh, we'll go into this in far more detail, far more detail. But anyway, so the first chakra, which is typically a red color, is a red color, will begin to expand and, and to pulsate. It won't open up a lot, but it will feel like it wants to open. You'll feel a pressure at the base of the spine. A lot of people go, I just got this lower back pain. It's just really uncomfortable. Can you get that? Can you get rid of that for me, Pippa? I've been to the doctor. I've been to the ER. I've been to my wife. I've been to the massage person. Nobody can get rid of this. Acupuncturist. Nobody can get rid of this for me. Can you get, do the hands-on for me, please? And I look at him and I go, touch this. This is your exalted divine birth that is developing within you. And then I'll go ahead and explain everything that I know about this and they can either have it or they can't and uh, hopefully they can and as this starts to vibrate as it starts to move and the tailbone is moving that that pressure at the base of the spine is building something is coming you'll start having dreams sometimes you'll have dreams with snakes in them Kundalini will often come to a person as a snake as a serpent. One of the reasons is to give attention to the spinal cord. The spinal cord, without the spinal column, is very much like a snake standing on its tail. So the Kundalini Shakti, meaning the Mother Nature, the Sacred Feminine, will come to you as a serpent. And she'll also come to you for the reason of fear. Because this is a very intense transformation. And she doesn't want you going into fear and, and driving yourself crazy by virtue of the ego. The only thing that experiences fear in a human being is the ego. Nothing else is afraid. Just the ego. Kind of gives you an idea how badly we're controlled by our ego. <laughs> <laughs> so, she'll come, she'll give you a few fear tests. You know, you'll kind of be... She wouldn't be coming up in you if, if it wasn't known that you could have this. Okay. But still, the ego also needs to be trained, not killed, not obliterated, not taken out of your system. The ego is very much a part of who we are, and it's how we have survived in a body in the Western societies. You can't be egoless here. Not at first. We retrain the ego through behavior modification. Okay, and I'll get into those in a second. But that's what we do with the ego. We don't kill the ego. That's not what happens. So anyway, she gives you the fear test. You do whatever you do with that fear test. I know what I did. I went crazy with fear. You know, I had no idea. I didn't want to see snakes. And worse yet, I didn't want to feel the snake in my spine. That was very disconcerting. But anyway, I'll get to that later. <laughs> um, pretty soon, something's going to occur. You're going to be given a, a, a need. 
you're going to be given a need to do certain exercises. You'll feel yourself starting to wake up in yogic positions in bed. And 